Good morning, and welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church as we continue our little topical studies. We have about a 10-minute session we do every morning, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday anyway, and uh, we've been looking at some different ones here. See, we looked at uh, addictions, encouraged decisions, depression, discernment, and uh, Paul's teaching. We've looked at uh, eternal life, and we're looking at forgiveness tonight, or this morning, or excuse me. We're looking at forgiveness. I'm going to be looking over in Matthew chapter 6. So if you have your Bibles, turn over to Matthew chapter 6. And just a reminder, if you uh, want to maybe go back and look up some of these verses later, and have to, if you have pencil and paper, just write these down as I go through them, because I might go through them a little quick. And uh, you might like to go back and just do a little more extended study if we happen to hit one that you're really interested in. But uh, this one we're going to talk about uh, today is called uh, forgiveness, and it's uh, forgiveness of others. We're going to do one on forgiveness of others and forgiveness of sins. And so this is about uh, forgiveness of others. And so uh, what does it mean to, to forgive? Uh, you know, when it comes time to forgive somebody, do we have to do we have to wait for somebody to ask for forgiveness before we, we forgive? Or do we just go ahead and forgive? And even if they're not sorry, I've heard people say, well, they're not even sorry for how, Why should I forgive them if, if they're not even sorry for what they said or what they did? Well, <clears throat> the idea of forgiveness is that we, it sets us free. It takes away the bondage from us, uh, the, the, the frustration, the anger, whatever you're feeling. And we know that uh, through the years we've heard different stories about church problems in the churches. And one of the, the major uh, causes of a problem in the church is unforgiveness. Uh, people in the church get upset about all kinds of things. And uh, somebody says something or somebody does something and somebody else don't approve of it. And, and the feelings get hurt and all these kind of things. And, so then we have this this atmosphere of unforgiveness, and it it just creates a tension. And and so many times uh, people try to cover it up. Uh, you you're not even as a pastor. A lot of times you're not even aware of what's going on, and all of a sudden you find out that this person did something or said something to that person. Especially in small churches where you have families, and that you can get to get into some some real bad trouble. So what we're going to look at here, the, the idea of forgive uh, start with the meaning is to send away. You know, when we talk about the Lord forgiving us, as far as the East is from the West, He sends our sin away. In other words, not to be remembered anymore. And so, we're going to look over here at Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to look up here at uh, verse number 12. I mean, this is, has that, uh, some people call this the, uh, the Lord's Prayer, but actually it's the Lord's Instructive Prayer. Uh, the disciples want to know how to pray, and so here He's what the, He's telling them how to pray. And we get down here to verse number 12, and He says, And forgive us our debts as we forgive others. Okay, so there we see the idea of forgiving. So here I have a, a sin, somebody uh, has sinned against me, so I'm going to forgive them. And he says here, God, uh, forgive me my sins against you as I forgive others. And so we, and that's pretty straightforward, but let's get on down to verses 14 and 15. Uh, right after that uh, continuation of that uh, teaching of a prayer, he gets down here to verse 14 and 15, and he, and he goes back. And this is the one thing he just goes back and kind of... Uh, re-emphasizes, if you would. And he says here in verse 14, For if, if ye forgive men of their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. And uh, the idea that forgive is like to send away, you get rid of it. And the, the trespass has the idea of uh, sometimes it's intentional, sometimes it's not intentional. So the, the sin that somebody does, it says, uh, if you forgive men of their trespasses, what they, however well, they've hurt you, then your Father will forgive you. So that's, you know, that's understandable. So God says, uh, what we do, here's the standard. Okay, this is the standard. If, if somebody hurts your feelings or upsets you in that and you feel offended, then you forgive them. And as you forgive them, I'll forgive you. So if we look at the next part of that, see, we, this always, so many times in Scripture, there's the two sides of the coin. And so he sets it out here. He says, if you forgive men their trespasses, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But, in verse 15, Here's that conjunction. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And so what's he saying? God's saying, Here, here's the standard. All right, here's the standard. If, if you forgive, I'll forgive. But if you won't forgive, then don't ask me to forgive because I'm not going to do it. And so why, why would he do it? Why would God lay it out like that? Because if he forgives you and you're, you're over here and not forgiving is what we call what? It's sin. The failure to forgive, that sin. So if you won't forgive, then God says, and then, then don't come to me because you're entertaining sin when you, there's something you can do. 
And it's not that the person has to uh, ask for forgiveness. It does, they might not even want you to forgive them. It has nothing to do with that. He's saying you need to do your part. You need to put that sin away. You need to put that, that stumbling block, that offense away. You need to get rid of it and go on with your life. And, and uh, like too many times we hear people say, well, you need to uh, forgive and forget. Well, uh, it's one thing to forgive, but to, to forget, we, we still have the, the mind. We still remember things. And sometimes things come to mind that, that a, a word is said or a, uh, some, some action is taken and it brings it back to our mind. But the idea is if I've truly forgiven, then it doesn't bother me. Okay, it's not going to upset me. It's not going to disrupt me. Uh, I might be aware of it, but it's not something I'm going back and relive or not something I'm going to go back and, and uh, carry on and, and continue on. So we see here, we see right now, which says, forgive, I'll forgive. If you won't forgive, I won't. I'm not going to forgive you. And now I'm going to go over to Ephesians, and we're going to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. And here we, he's talking about in chapter 4, he's talking about the, the, the old life, the new life, and putting on the new man, and getting rid of, putting on the new man, getting rid of the old man. And we get over here to chapter 4, verse 32, and it says, And be ye, be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Okay? So here we see the, kind of this, the same standard. He says, well, here's what you, your attitude should be toward one another. Be kind one to another, Tenderhearted. In other words, we have a we're uh, compassionate. We have a a, uh, a warmth, if you would. We have a desire to to have good fellowship. We're going to be tenderhearted, and we're going to forgive one another. And here we go back and see what the kind of the the uh, the standard or something that we can use for a, an illustration. Even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Because Jesus died on the cross and he paid the price for our sins, we put our faith and trust in that shed blood, then we're forgiven of our sins. And it's and it's all because of the Father's love for the Son. All right, that's, that's the intent. The Father loves the Son so much that when we put our faith and trust in that shed blood as payment for our sins, our sins are forgiven and we're given to Christ. And so what he's telling us then is when you when you have these things come into your life, when you have these things come into the, the church or to your family or to your workplace or your school place, he says you need to be kind so we have that attitude to start with. Okay? We have that attitude and that has to do with being the, the Christian and, and living that kind of life. We have to have that attitude that we're going to be uh, kind, we're going to be tender hearted, and we're going to have a desire to forgive. We don't want to carry the burdens. We don't want to carry it on to where it becomes a burden to us that becomes a stumbling block. And he keeps in mind, keep in mind, he's telling us now, uh, this is one of the situations where you get to choose how you're going to be forgiven by God. If you can't forgive, then he says, don't come to me to be forgiven. We talked about that over in Matthew chapter 6, and he kind of reiterates that here in Ephesians chapter 4. So again, we get to that attitude of having the right attitude about what's going on. And then I'm going to go one more place before we close here this morning. And we're going to go over to Colossians chapter 3. And we're going to look at verses uh, 13 and 14. Colossians chapter 3. And we're going to look at verses 13 and 14. Here we go. It says, forbearing one another. or kind of, <laughs> The phrase is kind of to put up with one another. Basically is what he's telling us there. He says, forbearing one another, putting up with one another, and forgiving one another. Okay, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, listen, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Okay? Forbearing one another. In other words, you know what? We kind of put up with one another. Sometimes we just have to just suck it up. You know, somebody says something to hurt your feelings. Somebody does something that upsets you. Sometimes you just have to say, you know what? It doesn't, it doesn't make any difference. I'm just going to put it away. Forget about it. I'm going to go on. And so many times things are done in an unintentional way. Some people don't always try to hurt your feelings. They don't always try to upset you. Sometimes we, I know I've done it. You've probably done it too. You said something, and after you said it, you think, wow, that was not the right thing to say. And you can tell that you've upset somebody. And so many times, again, it's, it's not confronted. It's not uh, faced up to. And so this sets their investors, and that causes that problem within a, the family relationship, or school relationships, or church relationships, whatever it is. So we want to deal with it. And he says here, and it goes down to verse 14 then, he says here, And above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And what's he telling me here? He says, what you need to do is put away all the unforgiveness, all the hurt feelings, and put, put on love. Okay, the idea that I love you, I want the best for you. You might have hurt my feelings, you might have upset me, but you know what? Let's put it aside, let's get rid of it, and let's go on from here. 
And that's what God does. We're going to talk about that tomorrow when we get into the forgiveness of sins. How God deals with our sin and that. And we just need to be, listen, we need to have that compassion one for another. First John tells us, you know, as, as a Christian, we love one another. We love the brothers. We love the sisters in Christ. And we have that relationship. We want to have peace. We want to have tranquility. We want to be together. So whatever it is, take care of it. Deal with it. And look, and just keep in mind, as you forgive, God forgives you. Now, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, you've never been forgiven of your sin to start with. You're still carrying the burden for your sin, but God is willing. Hey, He loves you. He's already willing to forgive your sins. If you just repent, turn from your sin, turn and put your faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you have eternal life. And for you and I as Christians, we need to be an example. We need to be an example of love, of tenderness, of compassion, one for another, willing to put those things behind us and not get all caught up in our, our selfishness, our self-centeredness, understanding we're doing it for the good of Christ. We want people to see a love between our brothers and sisters. We want to see people to have the idea that as Christ has loved us, so we love one another, and we want people to come to know Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for the idea of forgiveness, and we thank you for the scripture that explains to us uh, the need for us to be forgiving and to put things aside and not carry the burden. We just pray, Father, for those that might be right now carrying an attitude of unforgiveness, that you would just touch their hearts, touch their lives, open their eyes and hearts to you, Lord, and that they would uh, react in a way that would be a pleasing and blessing to you, then we know it will be the best. For those who don't know Christ, we pray this would be today, they would repent, turn and put their faith and trust in Jesus. He paid the price for their sins by shedding his blood, and through that shed blood is forgiveness of sin. We thank and praise you for what you're going to do, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.